Hello everyone, welcome back to Locke's Quest. Today we'll be taking on the first part of our campaign in the north. As we can see, Kingdom Force forces are little words. Kingdom Force has already made its appearance here and is already trying to defend the source well from the Clockwork invasion. But right now they need an Arcaneer in order to help them. The Arcaneer that was helping them before has been taken back to Antonia to get healed. That's another thing, you won't actually, uh, though you'll see, like, Arcaneer trainees like Locke is, but they'll be, uh, generic NPCs for a lot of Arcaneers. Oof, excuse me. Um, those, uh, Locke, those NPCs are, like, you never fight with them, unlike the Kingdom Force people. Something I also meant to mention, mention in part, maybe, what was it, last part? In part four, I forgot to mention the Shielder uh, guy, the Shielder uh, Kingdom Force troop, actually doesn't make an appearance outside of the tower defense section of the game. So you should really be careful. So you should really be in knowledge that the, Sh that the Kingdom Force doesn't have a Shielder enemy or Shielder Kingdom Force soldier. Uh, for this part of the for this part of the game or this section, I really do recommend uh, a giant wall defense. I know it's a game where you have to put a wall, so no duh. What I mean by that is a defense that allows for the that allows for your turrets to take out most of the enemies that will be coming. Because this is going to be one of the first few sections of the games where we're actually going to have to deal with a lot with a massive horde of enemies. Uh, so just to be careful, you want to set up a good wall defense. You also want to set walls across the back end. Make sure that you that remember that the game is isometric, so you can set your walls up in a fashion that is other other than what you can see. Just where you can see, I mean. So you so you take advantage of the isometric perspective. You're gonna see me use it here. Uh, Standardly, that's what I think a lot of people would do on their first playthrough. They'll set up uh, turrets like that as like a choke point, quote unquote, for any clockworks that come by. But it's good to set up these turrets right turrets right here like the goo turret this is one of the few sections where the goo turret is actually really helpful due to the amount of clockers you'll be fighting here you want to put the goo turret specifically so that way you can actually uh slow down the enemy the range the turrets that are the rota the rotagon turrets can see the enemies from a relatively large distance so they'll still hit the enemies and the founds of fire and the i believe they're called fire I've actually forgotten what the fire ones are called, but those turrets also are able to do massive damage to multiple enemies, so I'd recommend having those out. Now, as you can see, I skipped ahead as far as the battle days. Over that time, I don't think any co any Kingdom Force soldiers died. By the way, if a Kingdom Force soldier died in the middle of a, of a uh, campaign section, and or like in the middle of a battle section, for example, uh, that Kingdom Force guy is dead for the rest of the game, or for the rest of that section. I don't know if they respawn, I don't know if they don't respawn anywhere from the this matter, but, uh, yeah. So if you lose a Kingdom Force soldier at some point, you will have to, um, you will, that Kingdom Force soldier will be gone. These clockworks are trying to make it around the back, and the clockwork and different groups of clockworks can take different routes throughout the game. Uh, sometimes they'll take the same route that you'll think that they're going to take, other times they take routes that are different. And, like, those clockworks were actually trying to make it towards my own. Uh, towards the back end of my, of my walls, which if you remember from the tutorial, or maybe you didn't mention, the walls attack from behind actually take more damage than the walls you attack from the front. So it's highly recommended to make sure your walls are always facing forward. I don't believe, I believe the walls can't shoot behind themselves, but don't quote me on that. I think they do, though. Uh, other than that, though, this section is a good place to really get used to the game. It's another, it's kind of another tutorial section, but not really. There's no, uh, it's a, a bit harder. It adds a lot, it adds more um, clock, well, it doesn't add clockwork systems, but at, at least in some of the types. But it does add a lot more as far as the uh, general size of the battle. They don't want to spend a good bit of the time just running around for turn, uh, turrets, because they are going to get damaged pretty tough to use the mass force they want to fight. 
as you can see, my uh, my special bar is actually all the way up to blue, which means that now that I'm using it, uh, it can go for longer. Usually, uh, if you use it on green, it won't do out most if you use it on green that affects the damage that it does, but I know that it affects how long it lasts, and so it's, more, it's, it's much more recommended for me to use it on blue than the green. But if you need it in a quick pinch, it should get rid of any pockets in the general area. Not a lot, but it should get rid of it. Most of it should get rid of it. Maybe even take out the one that I was thinking you get rid of. By the way, uh, Keenan, if you were trying to push me for the dialogue, Keenan might have mentioned it. Uh, if you use your, if you ratchet, what is it, ratcheting? If you use ratcheting a lot, and you also mix that with your attack, with your damage, with the amount of damage and attacks you do, you actually get, uh, actually get the ability to get the uh, special meter up. Like, it just goes up. Still. And so you can look for that to help yourself out. And, you know, and just keep ratcheting. Because uh, sometimes you might set up a wall defense that you can't get by because you want can't both of his own wall. As such, uh, you'll need that ability to help either to help, like, defend your walls. It makes it a bit more challenging that Block can't go through his walls. There's an enemy, or a boss, later on in the game, near the end, that uh, can go through walls, and he is full of shit. Sorry for the language there. <clears throat> anyway, Isaiah failed on his mission. Only the NPCs can fail. If you, if you, if Locke dies or fails, you actually get a game over, and you have to restart the day, or you have to restart the from the build phase. And sometimes you can end up really screwed over. But, here comes a cutscene, guys. We'll get more of those type of cutscenes later on in the game. Uh, more types of uh, moving motion comic type cutscenes will come up. And yes, I will be adding captions to all of them because I don't like to talk during them. I like the music that plays during a lot of them. And this is this is a, a nomad from the north, I believe. Their village is being attacked by the clockworks, and this is a, where the real sense where. Locke really takes takes range of the fact that he is an Arcaneer and that he goes ahead on, even though he doesn't want to do it at first. Isaiah actually has to push him to do it. Uh, Locke isn't exactly sent to do this, but he does it. But he does it for the stone craft, for the stone which is uh, used for the wall, which the Arcaneers use for the walls as the secondary as the secondary type of uh, building block, if you remember. This is also the only section, this area in the north, where you get a separate type of gameplay mechanic that should have been more well implemented throughout the game, but we'll see more of that later. Usually I, and also this is one of the few sections of the games where I actually have to split up a uh, part of the game into two parts, so... Yay. Anyway, next time we'll be heading for the Nomad Village to help our new companion, the Nomad Guy, and his village. See you next time.